I've got a thing for witches, the wish fulfillment, dark arts, and evilness that ranges from campy to horrifying. They're the go-to figures when it comes to magic and spooky shit, along with other notable images. Black hats, spells, broomsticks, the occult, pagan rituals and appearances by the goat himself. The goat of goats. You can't escape it, it's in our culture. So of course when you factor in all that, you get a wide spectrum of movies and shows trying to put a spin on it. Sometimes borrowing just a little, other times existing to solely portray the stereotypes. I'll take anything as long as it indulges my fantasy. And is good. Gotta be good. I've already been sorely disappointed in the past by practical magic, and just recently wasted my time with another, Bewitched. Both have one of my favorite actresses. Both suck. <sighs> just my luck. I should have known better than to give it the benefit of the doubt, being a Nora Ephron film. Just saying that doesn't mean much to most people, so I'll have to take a minute to loop around and cover some bases before I head back in. For those who aren't in the know, are too young, didn't care, or whatever the case, Nora Ephron was a screenwriter-director for a few decades that created some of the blandest movies in Hollywood. After a long career, she passed away in 2012. Her formula went like this. Take a premise, go absolutely nowhere with it, and be as contrived as possible. Either made by herself, her sister, or together, you were getting a milquetoast, boring-ass film that exhibited everything wrong with family-friendly content. Hokey sentimentality without an interesting movie to back it up. Rarely she'd get it right or do something different. Either through the right cast elevating the dull story, or with the viewer finding a personal connection but not without seeing the flaws ahead. Her name and works have followed me since the 90s when I saw a bunch of them as a kid. Having been educated on Efron, and knowing you'll probably not want to have the same done to you, I can quickly summarize them like this. Okay, don't care, bullshit, don't care, fucking bullshit, good, bomb, bullshit, good. Add it up, you're not missing much. She was an average to below average writer-director. Having done little of note to expand her status beyond a paltry place among female directors, an already tiny group in the industry as it is, so even going by this standard, this lowly standard of being a Nora Ephron film, Bewitched is a failure. By my estimation, her worst. As a rom-com it didn't work, as an original idea it was bankrupt, and as a witch film it stinks. Bewitched is a meta remake rehash of the 1960s TV show of the same name, which itself was inspired by other earlier portrayals of contemporary witches in society. It starred Elizabeth Montgomery and initially Dick York, and I only knew of it on TV during late night reruns in the 90s. The show goes like this. A witch falls in love with a mortal man, only telling him she's a witch after they marry. Her goal is to not use her powers anymore and live a normal life, and through the show we see how that goes, which is to say, not always normal. The movie, get this, isn't just regurgitating that plot. That'd be too easy, and Efron likes to complicate things. In this, Nicole Kidman plays a witch, Isabel, who wants to stop using her powers and goes to LA to find a regular guy to fall in love with. Yeah, I know. Of all the places to find a normal person, she picks LA. At the same time, Will Ferrell is an actor, Jack, who's set to be the lead in the TV remake of the show, Bewitched. He ends up meeting Isabel, and she's later cast in the role of Samantha on the show. And from there, it's the typical Efron-esque comedy and romance. <sighs> Where do I start? Nicole Kidman is one of my favorites, as I mentioned earlier, from hospital ads and BMXing in the 80s to recent years where she's still relevant. I love her, but seeing her here made me die a little inside. Will Ferrell I can take in small amounts, and I mean cameo small. Stephen Colbert has a supporting role, something he'd revisit with Kidman years later, which she didn't remember. All of this so far, and it being a movie about a witch, got me to at least see this. And... that's it. I knew going into it I probably wasn't going to like it. The signs pointed to that. I didn't know, though, how big a piece of shit this really was. The script is a total mess, compounded by how contrived everything feels. The way characters act is idiotic and frustrating, except Michael Caine who's phoning it in. The stock music reminds me of just how meek Efron's films are when it comes to soundtracks and scores. It feels outdated when it's only a film from 2005. 
They have a black cat, but half-assed on it looking like a witch's black cat. And they don't do anything with it. They literally don't do anything with it. I've seen more magic out of black cats in real life than I did with this one. There's a severe lack of anything funny. In a movie that's supposed to be a comedy, that's gotta be the worst aspect of it. I kiss her because she's so powerful. <sighs> <sighs> what the fuck? Alright, look. When this is the best part, your movie stinks. As a romance film, the chemistry cannot be more non-existent. These characters have no reason to be with each other aside from the plot saying so. And the whole time I was watching, I felt a total disconnect. The film didn't have much of a point to it, or one to care about. Actually, nah, there was no point. I'll need to show you what I'm talking about, and that means going through the film. It starts off bad with a chintzy opening song and Isabel landing at the house she wants in LA. Did someone live here? She just saw it and took it for herself, magic and all. That doesn't make for a good judge of character. I'll take it. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. I'm so happy. It's just, there's one thing. I'm gonna need some references. Uh, I don't have any of those. Oh dear, that's serious. I don't know that we can do business together oh, if you don't have dear. references. Bye now! Oh my god. You know, she just flew here on a broomstick too, and you're telling me no one saw her up in the air? I know they're not going to factor exact locations or anything in the story for exterior shots like this, but it's still quite a ways in, as you can see here. She works her magic and boom, the house is now hers. As much as Efron tries to paint Isabel as naive and good-hearted, her character is not compelling and feels as though she's childlike. Not in a fun way, but a dumb way. It's revealed later that she was homeschooled, whatever that actually means for spellcasters in this movie, and the info is conflicting regarding her exposure to the outside world. It's almost as if... <gasps> Nora Ephron created this movie with the tone of a 60s sitcom. That won't feel unnatural and forced. Rom-coms in general have this attitude of outside the realm of reality for the sake of happy thoughts and feelings. Cool, as a viewer you're taking the time to get what you want. But there are levels to that. I feel like I believe in unicorns. I feel like I believe in unicorns. Like those kinds of levels. Isabel's father, Michael Caine, tries to convince her that what she's doing is irrational, but she isn't swayed. The movie doesn't give us much to go on except that she doesn't want to fake her way through life anymore. Unlike the fake voice she's using, still using her powers when convenient, and having things happen to her for plot's sake rather than her driving the plot. As if everything is given to her. Her co-lead, Jack, is an actor in the middle of a divorce trying to bounce back after landing the lead role on a new show, which just so happens to be a remake of Bewitched. A remake no one asked for, few in real life would watch, and one that the movie doesn't even care that much about. Some have said it's a crass attempt by the network to mark a nostalgia, but rather than take a risk on new ideas. This isn't the old Bewitched. After failed auditions for a co-star, Jack goes to a bookstore, just cause, and by the stars aligned, he finds his Samantha. They just so happen to be at the same bookstore at the same exact time in the same city. This isn't coincidence, this flew right past that. The laziest goddamn writing is what it is. That seems to be a crutch of Efron's, cause I've seen this bookstore plot device used in at least two other films of hers. Anyways, Jack is captivated by what he sees and has to know who this woman is. If I can take his side for one moment, I get it. Nose fetish. I've got it too, when it comes to certain actresses. So Jack tries to pitch the role but fails. He then dumbs it down for her because Isabel apparently has no idea how to read a situation when he brings up being famous or being a witch on TV. It's just so phony. Like, what, is she an idiot? This isn't how people act. There's something I have to tell you. I'm a witch. I'm not a witch. Yeah, exactly. No, you're giving it up. Who told you? You're about to, on the next page. It's Bewitched. The TV show? We're redoing it. Ugh, it's like I'm watching Enchanted again, but lamer. She then mentions how she wasn't allowed to watch Bewitched, which adds more questions about her old life that we never learn about except superficial info. It doesn't matter since she's so dense she can't figure out context. Well, I play a mortal, and I'm in love with you, oh. and I don't care that you're a witch. You don't care? Mm -mm. No, is that true? Yes, it is. This is real. 
And now we have our movie. Cut later to Isabel studying for her role and her useless neighbor comes in. Of the unnecessary side characters, this one's the worst. Like a projection of all the terrible rom-com cliches without the self-awareness. It's gonna be okay. Oh, whoa. Who is that? It's no Maria. No. Okay. Too late. How can this be? When my first husband left me, I wanted to cut the brake cables in his car, but instead we ended up having sex on the elliptical machine. Which one? See how she flies. Ugh, god damn it. Let's fast forward past this bullshit so we can get back to the two studying tape. It's like neither they nor Efron are trying to change anything. They're just going to copy characters and plots. They're unashamed about it. And who thought this over? Who would watch this when they're making it so similar to the original? I've read about how this movie is supposed to be satirizing Hollywood while paying tribute to the original, but that's not how this comes across. And having a live audience there made me feel uncomfortable watching. The live audience thing never felt authentic to me since 2002. You know, when I was 12. Seeing it here makes me wonder if people have to force reactions when they keep redoing takes and stuff. Can you imagine being there and having a fake laugh over and over? They'll just throw in a laugh track later to spice it up anyway, so what's the point? After filming and feeling good about what's going on, Isabel overhears some badmouthing and how they're downgrading her role to please Jack. When she was in plain view of them. Right. So after realizing that she was played a fool, she gets family friendly pissed and starts using her powers. It's unfortunate how Kidman doesn't muster the backbone that Elizabeth Montgomery did when she played Samantha. 40 years earlier, yet Montgomery had a craftiness to her that isn't at all present in this new one. You better get going. No, of course not. Not deliberately. I mean, she's exactly what Larry and I have been looking for. Well, that's wonderful. Now, how'd you like to go to the movies, eat popcorn, and smooch? I would love to. Quadrimus Invecta Expedia. You want to see me, dear? <laughs> yes, mother. That's what I call retro hot. Of course, I had to look this up and watch a few episodes to know since the movie does fuck all to introduce me to any of these characters. It assumes I already know everything about the show. After her switch, Isabel bolts to a supermarket. I guess to feel normal, but it's really for product placements. Bewitched was made by Red Wagon in conjunction with Columbia Pictures, a division of Sony Pictures, who are known product placement whores. This movie initially was director Penny Marshall's and Paramount's project but fell to the Efrons to complete after years in production limbo. By that point, they were at the mercy of advertisers flooding the movie, not to mention the movie promoting another property. Not all of these are in your face or noticeable, but when you see it, you can't unsee it. And don't tell me this is mocking other movies' as product oversaturation, because that argument stinks. Most of these scenes have absolutely no bearing on the plot. The point of this whole shopping scene is just for Michael Caine to get screen time for his contract and other behind-the-scenes excuses. The Panda Express shot is the only one where I'm like, ah, oh, now I want Panda Express. The actual plot picks up again in the next scene when Isabel sees Jack taking credit for her success. What a dick. Ah, oh, what's a dick? Ugh, whatever. It's now the middle of the movie when Isabel is led into getting back at Jack. You might think this goes somewhere. You'd think this has a payoff. You'd think the movie wasn't going to waste your time. Just wait. A new witch is introduced, Aunt Clara, who, let's try and understand what the hell this is. Aunt Clara was a character on the original Bewitched who was related to Samantha. There is no Aunt Clara mentioned on the remake show within the movie, but there's an Aunt Clara who's related or not to Isabel? Who also acts just like the character from the original show that also exists in this movie's show's universe? How does that make any sense? How would they incorporate her in the remake within the movie? Who is this Aunt Clara? Is she or is she not the same one from the original show? Or are we actually going with Space Jam logic? Oh my god, we're going Space Jam. Why would the Efrons write it so that the same character is an actual person that exists outside the show despite her only ever existing as a character within the show? I can't wrap my head around what's going on. 
The movie introduces her out of nowhere, then immediately lets her come up with the idea to put a hex on Jack and make him love Isabel. For the next 14 minutes, and I mean all of the next 14 minutes, you're watching nothing. The Efrons must have thought they were being cute by pulling this shit. For one day, Jack is in love with Isabel, but it's the spell at work, not him, and Isabel knows that's not true love. So knowing this isn't what she wanted before the hex was even put on him, knowing throughout the day this isn't right and doing nothing to stop it because we assume based on how she's acting that Isabel has no ability to undo the hex, Isabel undoes the hex. What witches wish no mortal needs, let time repent and unsow its seeds. And now I speak the ancient word of redemption and regret. Rewind. Um, what? Is this a typical witch spell or are these godlike powers? She knew how to do that the entire time? The original Bewitched defined magic as whatever the production wanted it to be, so it wasn't off the hook either. But in this movie, where the magic isn't used much as it is, you go from simple tricks and spells to busting out an elite universal changing power move in a film that never set up Isabel as being capable of it, and wasting it on a trivial issue like this. She undid the entire thing, as inept writing as it was all a dream. And do you know what? Nothing matters anymore. Isabel shows up the next day, blows off some steam, and Jack falls for her anyway. That's all it took. That's it. You spend the rest of the movie waiting for the inevitable reveal, and when it happens, you're already dead inside like me. You play this film, and it's like walking into your own slow death. Remember the ex-wife problem Jack was having? Yeah, that gets resolved as soon as it pops up again thanks to Isabel doing some magic. Did the Efrons forget their own character? They definitely forgot the Bewitched show they were filming since it becomes an afterthought. There are no obstacles to overcome anymore, no character development fleshed out or earned. They gave up. The movie just gave up. And now it's rushing the ending. It cuts to Jack's house where he's throwing a party and the first time I saw this I knew I'd seen this house before. I wasn't wrong, it was Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which also came out in 05. Better movie, better time spent. I did some digging and according to Val Kilmer, who was in Kiss Kiss, he said he grew up across the street from it. Well, turns out the Iceman's full of shit because I found out where it actually was. It's the Farallone Estate, Frank Sinatra's old house, and it's been extensively used in TV and film. Way too noticeable once you've seen it. Just make some tweaks to the look and there. No one will know the difference. This is where I want to bring up again the disconnect I felt. The old timey music, the fact that a laid back guy is having a formal party at his own house just for a divorce celebration, the lack of anything fun. This is all fake. I'd be bored out of my mind. I don't see this appealing to me, just as I don't see how the Efrons thought this would appeal to anyone under the age of 30 when it came out. Like, anything in this movie, really. I might not be the target demographic, but Efron has made a couple movies that can appeal to younger generations. Isabel decides now is best to reveal her identity. Good timing, cause this party fucking blows. Jack doesn't buy it at first, despite the obvious tricks. Until she takes out that broomstick, then she means it. So real, I can't even see the buttons on it. It is real. It flies, too. Oh, I'd love to see that. Hang on. What? Put me down! I kept trying to tell you. No shit, look at her. If she told any of this to me, no problem. She tells me she's a witch on our first meet and I tell her I indulge in evil every day. Let's get married. But see, that's my world. Jack on the other hand freaks out on a revelation that feels late and unsatisfying. The way she's acted feels disingenuous within and out of the movie, but that's not enough to write her off as a malevolent witch. Restricted by its script, hampered by its direction, and all leading to this conclusion, the movie's payoff is a big whiff. If there's any solution to saving a movie this dead, I'd love to hear it. And there is no solution. The two mope as if their relationship had any depth to it, just like Michael Caine's performance as he appears one last time to pick up his paycheck, rattling something about home being where you're happiest. 
As I'm looking at these two, I'm wondering what's the point of having witches exist in this world if they don't do anything? I'm practically at the end and I barely know anything about these characters. What little I do know, I couldn't give a shit about them. Efron, if I can compliment her at her best, can make characters likable and feel a part of a real city. Shooting on location, like she often did for her New York shoots, immersing her story in the bustle of the city gave it life. That kind of ambience and vibe is lost here. She utterly failed to make this feel like LA. Feel like characters doing meaningful stuff together and have a purpose for us to watch that wasn't a waste of time. Switching to Jack about to go on Conan, the cringiest performance in the movie hits. It's like saving the worst for last. Heidi Ho! No! Look what the cat dragged in. Somebody is retaining water. Uncle Arthur! Yeah, um, earlier in the movie, it was noted how Jack was a fan of Uncle Arthur on the original Bewitched, played by Paul Lind. Call it paying tribute or whatever, but this scene gave me douche chills. All the problems that I had trying to figure out Aunt Claire earlier are amplified. We saw Jack watching Bewitched with Paul Lind clearly on screen and now we're getting another person who Jack readily identifies as the same guy? What the fuck? Are there deleted scenes where Steve Carell was a character in the movie playing Uncle Arthur in the remake they were doing, or is this the movie actually saying Uncle Arthur is self-aware of his existence outside the show? When I first saw this, I was confused as hell. Now that I've seen some of the show and thought it over for a month, I'm just pissed. Oh, I, I am miserable. So am I. I have been in reruns for 32 years. And what, he exists to help Jack now? Why? He's out of the movie before you even realize he had no other purpose being there. All for us to listen to cliches from two people who don't belong with each other. But I'm- Shh, don't work it out. We can't. Yes, we can. I can't be normal because I'm a witch. There's tons of other witches who've done it. Who? Well, maybe not tons of other witches, but at least one. Samantha. Oh god, don't bring her up. You've already made a mockery out of her legacy. The movie has no real conclusion except jumping to a happy ending, giving one last referential middle finger to the audience. All those years on the table and this is the ending they stuck with? They don't show them finishing up the show for the season, going out together, or doing anything that would take time and effort to film. Just because I gave up early doesn't mean they needed to. With that said, I give up. There's so much wrong with Bewitched. One look at it and of course I knew it was an easy target. It's that breed of 2000s rom-com fodder that thankfully dwindled in the years after. It did a complete disservice to the original show it attempts to pay tribute to, a show that I've admitted to knowing nearly nothing about when I started doing this project. I can't declare myself a new fan or anything now that I'm at the end, but I know there's a total difference between what the original show was about and what this movie thinks the show was about. It surprises me that a woman as well respected as Nora Ephron didn't understand this or failed to control her own direction to depict this. The show Bewitched was on in an era of discontent, the height of the civil rights movement, the ongoing bloody conflict in Vietnam, the counterculture revolution, and other changes in society marking a shift away from traditional norms. The landscape was much different when television sought to portray ideal families and safe settings unlike reality. They were calculated moves in an old-fashioned time, a time Bewitched was caught in the middle of, so it tried to cater to the standard while covering themes and issues that affected society, albeit sanitized for television. Yes, it's very old-school, tame, campy, and dated, but it wasn't just a meaningless romantic comedy. It was successful when it first aired, but as times changed, the magic wore off. 40 years later, trying to reboot it doesn't work, at least not the way the Efrons did it. When the movie show tries to imitate the original show, it comes across as tone-deaf, off-putting, and fake. It retroactively devalues the original show by making it look, at least to a new viewer like myself, corny, empty, and shitty. It tries to hide behind the excuse of parody, satirizing Hollywood's remake trends and cheapening of art. They can stand by that intention, but it doesn't excuse that the Efrons and their backers were doing the same thing in the shallowest way. 
They rehashed genre norms, played it way too safe and sterile, diluted the humor, and ended up with a bland, unfunny movie with shallow witch elements, all while claiming it was honoring the original. The public view of witches has shifted dramatically, and with it our perception of what is entertaining when it comes to them. 2000s rom-coms flooded the market and enjoyed the most success they had since the late 80s, but that wasn't going to last either. There's only so much bankability with this formula. To win the audience, do an approach that's competently done and capable of capturing their interest beyond the superficial. Keep them engaged with what's happening on screen. The Witch Angle is a good one, but they railroaded it without establishing a solid foundation. They wanted to do happy horseshit, so be creative, fun, romantic, and entertaining and I'll probably enjoy it. Too bad it wasn't any of those. Make it thought out, make it sensible, make it right, but most important, make it have a point. But this is Bewitched. There is no point, and there never will be. It is by all accounts a failure, and one, thankfully, I'll never watch again.